Look, I'll be honest with you, I was hesitant to make this video, and this is actually something you can specifically do with cymatics packs. If you have drum loop stems, I'm telling you, this technique is busted. By the way, it doesn't matter what doll you use, you can use this in any doll. So I got some drum loops here from our Bad Bunny pack we just put out. And drum loops are really cool if you want to like test ideas, but I would argue there's limited control. So about a year and a half ago, I actually got our production team to start including drum loop stems. And that's the first piece of this forbidden jutsu is the fact that you have drum stems. So let's start by dragging in different drum stems and we're going to organize them in a certain type of way. First you drag it in, then you're going to stretch it. Then you're going to name the first track. I like to do is kicks. The second one, we're going to name it snare. One's going to be called, we're going to call it backup snare. Uh, we're going to next name the next one hi-hats. The next one's going to be open hats. And then we're going to do other one, other two, other three. So the first step set up, we have organized the layers. And now what I want to do is I want to take the hi-hat here and I'm going to drag it right here where the hi-hat is. Uh, I'm going to take the kick and drag it where kicks is and the snare where the snare is. The part that makes this magical is adding more than one set of stems. So we're going to go to the next loop and do the same thing. Stretch this. I personally also like to just do eight bar loops for this. So every eight bars, you're, you're, we're gonna get essentially a new idea. But as we put it in here, I'm gonna drag the kick up to the kicks row, the hi-hat down to the hi-hats row. The percussion is gonna go in other. The main clap slash snare always goes in snare. The backup snare is anything extra, right? Like offbeat rim shots, little snare rolls, anything like that. I just put in the backup snare. Obviously our open hat goes into open hat and our percussion goes into other. Other could be anything else that's included with the loops. So there's a lot of different stuff usually. So I think the magic here is one, if you're in FL Studio, if you go up here to macros and then you go to uh, switch all audio clips to real time stretching. Now, if I stretch down to let's just pretend 115 BPM, everything stretches nicely, but if I even go up to 140, just everything fits. So stage two is done. Not only have we set up all the rows, but now we have also included four different drum loops here. And just to spice it up, I'm actually grab a couple extra set of drum loops from different packs because one of the things that makes this strategy work really well is adding variety because we are gonna throw a bunch of ingredients into a pot and listen to what comes out of it. Okay, let's take this. All right, so now I've added stuff from this Bad Bunny pack, but I've also grabbed some other drum loops. I think some of the magic here happens when you combine different things. But now we're also going to add in like a couple weird elements just to get cool variety because I don't want you guys thinking like, oh, this can only sound a certain type of way. If you're thinking like that, then you're not thinking big enough. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to dive into our new pack Echoes and I'm going to grab the percussion loops and find some cool ones. That's cool. One. You know what? We're going to dive into another pack again. Stage three is done. We have now dragged in a bunch of different loops from different things. I've added in a couple extra goodies like the shakers from other packs to add in a little bit of variety into this secret sample engine thing we're creating. I have uh, organized it now to where all the kicks are on the same track, the snares are on the same track, the backup snares, the hi-hats. The reason you want to do that is I'm going to randomize and shuffle these and I don't want to end up with 10 kicks as a beat. That's not going to make any fucking sense. So here we go. We're going to do the random portion of it. So all the kicks here, I'm going to move them over one and then I'm going to move this all the way over to the beginning. What that I did was I just shifted them all right I'm just doing a little bit of random if I move this over two technically and I move the two at the end now they're pretty much all landing in new positions right so I'm just randomizing the position of these take these move them here so now essentially every sound is ending up on a new loop that's the whole purpose of this exercise is to just random another couple things I want to do like I'm going to grab some random sets of hi-hats like we'll grab this first one we're just going to pitch it down an octave make sure you do that thing with the macros if you're in FL studio switch all audio clips to real-time stretching this allows you to, to also shift the BPM without causing chaos. And just like that, the sacred technique is officially done. I randomized the layers of the drums in a way where we're at least going to go get a, a trap snare. We're at least going to get a trap kick. I'm at least going to have randomly, I'm going to have a backup snare slash rim shot. I'm going to have a random set of hi-hats. And what I'm able to do is I'm able to quickly and rapidly test different drum sounds uh, and make new drum loops out of the drum loops we already got. Real quick, before I click play, I didn't listen to any. I was just dragging in and I'm just mixing up. I'm just creating the environment for stuff to happen. So let's sit back and, and hear what we got. Not bad. That was nice. Love that one. Ooh. You hear that shaker? Just randomly sounded fire.
Same thing for the percussion here. The percussion sounds really cool. As you can see, I didn't hear any of that. Of course I heard little problems here and there, but I can go in and now doctor. Like I think there was a kick here, that kick. See, I just removed, there was a little problematic kick there. I moved in two seconds now, fix that loop. So now we have a handful. Let me also show you what happens when we crank up to 150 BPM, because now all these sound completely different. Has a lot more energy all of a sudden, right? Okay, so one cool thing that you can do with this, if you wanna prototype a bunch of ideas, watch what happens when I take, let's say a handful, I'm just gonna grab some melodies here from our new Echoes collection. Let's just grab some random ones and drag them in. And then I'm gonna grab some other melody loops from some other packs. I'm just grabbing random ass melody loops. I literally don't even care what they sound like. So right here, I have just dragged in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So not only were all seven drum loops we have kind of randomly generated, but now I've added in seven random melodies. And one of the first things you can use this for is just rapidly prototyping different drums on different melody loops, right? If that's a direction you want to go in, let me play it. Like I could take that last one, right? That last little piece there was probably my favorite. Like I could break it off and already right there, I would take this out and say, okay, cool. That's the kind of song I want to work on. So let me just go ahead and like. Like I already have a basis for a beat. So for beat makers, one cool thing about this is you can just rapidly prototype different melodies you have or different drum samples you have to try out different vibes. Another thing I like is what this trick does is it creates happy accents. Like the whole thing is a happy accident. The whole point is to randomly mix and match. And I think the things that get interesting is I combined a bunch of trap loops because I knew trap loops plus trap loops are gonna be somewhat good, right? What happens when you take Latin drum loops and you combine them with trap drum loops? Or what happens when you take chill drums and, and combine them with boom bat? That's where you get a lot of interesting stuff with this technique. So one, it's really good for prototyping uh, beats. Another thing I would say is, is that if you yourself have a bunch of different songs you've already created, render out the drum stems and kind of create yourself an ultimate stem folder where you can kind of mix and match your own samples just to hear what different possibilities you have out of the songs you've already made. And the same thing with your melody loops. If you have already made a bunch of melodies and you want to like take them out and play around with them, you can just rapidly prototest. The reason I didn't want to show you guys this idea is, is that people could take this the wrong way. They'll be like, you're killing creativity. Because you can theoretically do this without even listening to anything, and I don't think that that's the purpose. I think right now it's a really cool tool that I use sometimes. Let's say our team makes like 30 new drum loops. We'll take those 30 brand new drum loops and be like, let's run a little roulette on them. I'm calling it procedural generation because that's what we're doing. We're procedurally trying to generate new sounds through a procedure. There's one more thing I want to go into, which is changing the processing. Because just how you can pitch something down and get a new tone, you can actually go in Ableton. It's using Sins and FL right here. If you go to track mode, audio track, and let's say I assign this to four. Now all the hi-hats are running in the mixer into the four channel right here. So as you can see, so I could just put something like a uh, reverb, for example. So now all those loops are all going to have reverb when they uh, originally did it. And then let's say I want to take like the kick and I want to do the same thing. I want to go to audio track. I'm going to put the snare on two right here. I now can go in and let's say I want to put origin just to give everything, you know, a little bit more of a vintage feel on, on the snares. As you can see, you can add in effects now. So if I were to clone this entire row, let's pretend I'm just going to mix match. Okay. So for this second set of hi-hats, I'm actually going to add in a little bit of movement with LFO tool. So they're going to be kind of ducking a little bit. So now these randomly 
right here have a chance for high hats plus reverb. The high hats I put on the second row are gonna have a chance to have a little bit of movement. And the more random you can throw in to the generator, the more random you're gonna get out, right? There's that, there's that reverby one. Now what if it comes here? Now it's got a little bit of that swing on the hi-hat, right? Because we have the LFO tool ducking the hi-hat. So essentially you can use this for a lot of different stuff, whether you want to prototype new drum sounds, whether you made a bunch of songs and you take time to organize all the stems out so you can try to make new stuff out of it. You can dive into the cymatics packs and create new original drum layers. There's a lot of different ways to use this. I wouldn't write it off right away, just play with it. If you're sitting at home thinking, oh, this is gonna kill the creativity, you might stop there, but I would say just play with it a little bit. See what you come up with. It is sort of a forbidden jutsu, but I guarantee you'll be making a lot of ideas very quickly. I think you can do some cool stuff with this. By the way, the samples I was using in this video were actually from our new Bad Bunny inspired pack. It's actually a crazy offer. Right now you can get 100% for free, all you gotta do is spend one dollar in the store. So as long as you spend a dollar in the store, you can get the whole pack for free. It's a really sick pack. And that's where I got a lot of these drum samples from. And I will say not all companies do drum stem layers. And if you don't have stem layers, I think full drum loops are cool, but they're limited by nature. And I think one of the interesting things is, is having these stem layers, right? And you might be able to delete pieces of it and then add in your own original stuff on top. The drum stems, I'm telling you, they're fucking busted. I've been using it to speed up my production quite a bit. And this was just a couple use cases. So I guys, I just wanted to show you guys this trick and hopefully you guys, uh, Maybe play, play around with it and find something new. Feel free to leave something in the comments if you guys have ever tried to procedurally generate sounds in this fashion or try to make these happy accidents happen on purpose.